push it back. Uh, right, uh, Vicky's um, done the reason uh, in conjunction with uh, Andrew. Uh, let's see uh, if she can read it out and if that is acceptable to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the, the main issue that members are concerned about, which I've tried to word in the technical reason for refusal, is as this. Due to its location served from an unrestricted rural lane, the site does not have safe access for pedestrians or cyclists and as such represents an unsustainable development. Contrary to Planning Policy Wales, TAN 18, which is the Transport TAN and UDP policies, EMV, t EMV 27 in particular Criteria 7, which relates to um, sustainable access and Strategic Policy 2 of the UDP. Okay, any member want to add anything to that? No. Um, okay, uh, we'll take a vote on it then. Uh, those in favour of that recommendation, please show. Yeah, this is for refusal, of course, with that recommendation. Ten? Yeah, we've got ten. Uh, and those against that, please show. Three. Any abstentions? Two abstentions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we move swiftly on. I'm going to ask uh, if we can move 27 St. John's Close Cowbridge, which is on page 147, and it's got late reps to it, as the next piece of business on the agenda because we do have a, a an objector who wants to speak against the proposal so um, I'll ask the officer to lead us through the report and then I'll ask for the uh, speaker to speak 147 Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to confirm, this application is for a two-storey front and single-storey... Um, sorry, the description development should have been amended because this relates to amended plans, and I'm just reading from the top line. Um, this actually relates to a two-storey extension to the front of the property and a single-storey side extension as set out in the report, um, and the plan extracts have been included in the report for information. Um, there have been a large number of objections to um, this development. The initial plans did propose a much larger extension and um, the, a number of the reasons for objection are listed in the report which, um, which relate to the original, original submitted plans but further letters of objection have been received in respect of these amended plans which are now before us and are the subject of, uh, of tonight's debate. Um, we have also got late representations, if I can draw members' attention to those. Um, late representation three relates to comments from the Cowbridge Town Council on the amended plans and they've raised no objection. Uh, item number four is three further letters of objection received from neighbours raising concerns. Those have been dealt with in some detail through the late, um, the late rep uh, note, including a very full officer response to the issues raised. Um, if I can summarise the, the main concerns, but I'm sure um, Mr Davis will do so in a moment. Uh, they relate to um, the provision of patio doors being in the front of the proposed extension. So what we have here is um, an existing dwelling shown in the photograph that you can hopefully see up on the screens. Um, where you have a split frontage of the existing um, house, which was a design feature when the houses were built. Um, the proposal is to infill that, which has been done on a number of occasions in the street, and it's referred to in the neighbour representations as setting a precedent for this type of development. But in most uh, cases, if not all, um, they've included the insertion of windows rather than patio doors, and some exception has been taken to the provision of patio doors in the front elevation. Um, there's some dispute about the, uh, the accuracy of the plans in terms of the levels that are shown on the plans. Um, obviously, those matters have been assessed on site by the case officer who's, who's taken that into account. There's been some concern that this might lead to the need for a step out of the patio doors, which is not shown on the proposed plans. Um, that is not before us. We're not considering it. Um, although I have to say I'm not sure what... Uh, 
significant impact a step in front of the patio doors would have in any event. Um, there is also uh, remains significant concerns in terms of the parking from the neighbours' um, properties. Again, this is similar to the, the site that we were talking to earlier, talking about earlier. There will remain two parking spaces available to serve this property, and that is considered to be sufficient and in compliance with the council's guidelines. No objections being raised from the highway authority in, in respect to that. Um, I think that probably uh, summarises the matters, but I'm sure Mr. Davis will uh, will um, expand upon those concerns. Okay, then uh, I'll ask Mr. Davis if he'd like to speak. When you turn your microphone on uh, and start speaking, you have three minutes. Okay, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very much. This is a controversial proposal. Residents are asking that you reject it, but with the recommendation that it be represented in line with precedent. There are 13 houses in St John's Close. Only the proposers are supporting this proposal. Nine out of the remaining 12 houses have written to oppose these amended plans as they stand on sound planning grounds. Now let me be clear, we're not against development but there is an established precedent for development in St John's Close that has produced a harmonious street scene. These plans would cause material negative impacts and they would in turn set a precedent for further discordant development. There is no strong case for breaking precedent. Following precedent would give the proposers nearly everything they ask for. There are a few other issues. First, the officer's report does not fully represent residents' views. It doesn't reflect our argument that these plans be brought in line with precedent. The officer's report was prepared during the time for consultation. Residents' views are treated as late submissions in a paper sent to me last night. Of course, the submissions were not late. They were on time. But officers had already issued their paper. This is not good governance. Second, the plans in front of you are incomplete and misleading. You and residents are not seeing the full story. It would be wholly wrong if the proposers were rewarded by approval. It would be tantamount to the council encouraging deception. Third, these plans breach the Vale Council's own guidelines and national design regulations. The advice I have received is that officers' comments on these in at least one area in the paper received last night are incorrect. So what we have is one, plans that needlessly break precedent and disturb a well-integrated street. Two, poor governance in incorporating submissions. Three, dodgy plans. Four, guidelines and regulations ignored. Now, we know why this committee is considering this proposal. I invite you to think for a moment how this looks from the outside. But you have the power here. Officers' recommendations are only judgment. Let's be clear again. Residents are not opposing development. But you have the power to reject these plans and recommend that they be brought in line with precedent. I urge you to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your time is up. Well timed. Okay then, uh, I'll ask the officer to come back on any of them that you've said, Mr. Davies, and then, oh no, I, first of all, anybody want to ask Mr. Davies any questions uh, in relation to what he's said? Yes, Councillor Franks. Um, Mr. Davies, uh, I'm looking at your um, late, sorry, I've got to use the word late uh, representation, uh, which has been tabled today. On P26, you say, let us, given at Appendix A, reflect prior plans. Frankly, this is extraordinary. Could you elaborate on, on, on that? I don't fully grasp it. Thank you. Are we okay? There we yeah, go. Yeah, fine. Th th yes, thank you very much. There have been two sets of plans. There was a first set of plans, and there are now the amended set of plans. The letters that were included in the officer's report that were sent to you before the weekend referred to the original set of plans 
and not the amended plans, which I did find extraordinary. Okay, anybody else? Perhaps Vicky will pick up on that. Okay, thanks Vicky. Thank you, Chair. Um, members will be aware that it is not unusual for us to prepare planning officers' reports for committee in advance of or prior to the end of a consultation period, um, whether that's with neighbours or national resources or any other statutory consultee. Um, the reason for doing so is it's, it, it's imperative that we expedite planning applications as quickly as we can. Planning committees are only held once a month. The time frame for preparing reports is some two or three weeks in advance of planning committee. And in an ideal world, we would wait for absolutely everything to be before us before we draft the planning committee report. We, we, don't, we don't live in an ideal world and therefore we have to um, work within the parameters of the system. And um, here, members are fortunate that actually we have a very good system in place for late represent. I call them late representations. What I mean is matters that are reported to you after planning committee reports have been finalised. They are given as much, if not more, attention by members by virtue of them being verbally reported to you, um, copies of the entire representation being provided for you, and therefore, um, you know, I do not feel that any member of the public has been uh, prejudiced in any way in this process because their views have been taken into account. The consultation uh, time frame has now expired and members are free to make a decision on the application this evening. Um, in terms of much, much has been made about this issue of precedent, and I have explained to Mr Davis, just because there is a precedent in the street of a, an acceptable form of development that has been approved does not mean that everybody else has to follow that e example of an acceptable development and people are at liberty to put forward proposals in any shape or form that they wish and so long as they comply with our standards, our guidance and our, our policies then we are still at liberty to approve such applications irrespective of whether or not there's been a precedent for a different type of development. So um, members have, uh, officers have assessed this application and have viewed it to be acceptable in light of all, all the um, relevant planning policies and do not consider that, um, that it would be appropriate to insist that uh, the applicant replicates precisely what's been done to other dwellings in the street. This is not part of the conservation area. It is not a particularly sensitive uh, part of the Cowbridge conservation area, for example. And, and what is being proposed to a modern house in a cul-de-sac is, is perfectly acceptable in officers' views. So that's why we have a recommendation for approval on this. Okay. Councillor Anthony Powell. Thank you, Chair. Um, we, we heard from um, our officer there that um, it's not unusual for officers to put together the report which will go to planning committee and upon which the members will make a decision. Um, can the officer assure us uh, that from the time that that report had been completed, as it was completed prior to the expiration of the consultation period, can the officer confirm that any uh, representations that were made after the officer's report had been completed would not have made any material difference to the officer's report and the officer's recommendations. I can confirm that those letters have obviously been replicated in the late representations and, resp and the officer's response to them deals with all the matters raised. Fundamentally, they don't change our stance in terms of the officer's recommendation because the issues raised, such as parking and precedent and uh, visual impact of the development, are all deemed to be acceptable, which is why we're not recommending an alternative uh, uh, recommendation to you. Um, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are examples in the past where a late representation from a statutory consultee has changed officers' recommendation to planning committee, and that but it's not to say that that situation is impossible. And had something been raised in these late, in these representations that fundamentally uh, led us down a different route in terms of the recommendation, we, we would have taken that into account and, and reported that to you. That's not the case here. Thank you. Okay. 
Any other member like to say anything? Okay. Uh, nobody's removing refusal. So uh, from here, uh, I'm going to move officer's recommendation. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Gwyn Roberts. Okay. Those in favour of the officer's recommendation, please show. Twelve. Those against? None. Those abstentions? Two. Thank you for that. Uh, moving on then, uh, I think we'll go back onto the list again. Uh, we're going to the land adjacent to Vicarage Field, Sutherdown Road, which is on page 108. Now, I know that we've already visited this site in the past. And, uh, sorry, Andrew. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'd, I'd, yeah, I think he does. We're, we're getting on the land, Vicarage Road. You're all right with that one, aren't you? Oh, it's the next one he goes out on. Okay, we'll have Andrew back. Uh, what I was saying, Andrew, this land adjacent to Vicarage Fields, Southern Down Road, you may recall, was subject to site visits in the past. Uh, but I think uh, Vicky's going to persuade you because they've come in with a different application now, smaller in scale, and they've proved a business plan uh, for the development that uh, it's now acceptable to officers. Okay, Mickey. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, yeah, so members uh, will be aware, both from, um, from past site visits and from the planning uh, history set out in the report, that we have had a, a number of proposals in the past for this type of use, albeit in a different, um, uh, a different scale and proposal. Um, we have uh, refused um, a similar proposal, but for a much larger dwelling, um, and that the reasons for refusal there are set out at page 111. Um, since then, officers have worked closely with the applicants to um, ensure that the business case submitted um, does everything it should in terms of a rural enterprise and um, and and the case for this proposal which is for a b and b type accommodation with um, a limited manager's accommodation as part of the proposal it's actually a, a relatively small scale uh, building certainly in comparison to the previous refusals the business case um, works on the basis that there is stabling at the site the applicants have an existing building uh, existing business in the area to do with horse related activities including um, uh, they run the veil carriages uh, business locally and uh, the premise of this business is that it will attract horse um, owners uh, that want to come to the area bring their horses with them they've got stabling on site they can stay in the B&B &B and um, there will be 24-hour care for those horses provided by the managers of the B&B &B. so it's a rural enterprise exceptions dwelling it is on on the edge of the settlement and opposite the settlement boundary um, so strictly speaking it's out of accordance with the development plan for normal housing it's not the sort of location we would allow normal housing and therefore the recommendation includes a condition to do with rural enterprise exceptions that if if the business fails the the dwelling would fall back to um, be treated like an agricultural workers or rural enterprise dwelling and in in the last case scenario that it would be affordable housing so it is recommended for approval on the basis of an exception right the local member is uh, councillor audrey preston she'll have a lot to say about this so we better bring her in straight away no, she hasn't got a lot. She just wants to say I'm delighted to see it's gone through because I think it will be beneficial to the village. I didn't agree at first. I thought it was more, far too big, but now it has been scaled down. And I think, I mean, they do a lot with the horses and I think with their bed and breakfast and that, I think it will be a welcome aspect to the village. Are That's you going I to move think. anything, Audrey? Yes, I'm going to move. Oh, right. Thank Councillor you. Nick Hodges. I think you're right. I think it will attract sort of um, equine type people. It might even attract shepherds as well. Uh, but <laughs> can I, my, my question, <laughs> if I was a shepherd, I'd be very attracted to it. Uh, can I just ask, St Bride's Major Community Council consulted in November, no comments received to date. Is that still the case? 
we haven't received anything um, to be reported as late representations. But there we are. Council argues is seconded. Any other member? Otherwise, I'll go straight to a vote. Okay, those in favour, please show. And looking round, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, right, we've got um, six Klossi Furren Barry, uh, which is a local member's property, but um, it's on page 139. That's the reason it's come to committee. But uh, anything to add to the report, please, Vicky? Uh, no, just a, a brief explanation, really, that this relates to the... Um, it's a slightly unusual property because it's, uh, the residential accommodation is currently at first floor above three garages. Two of those garages uh, relate to um, a neighbouring property or serve a neighbouring property. Um, the proposal is to convert the only garage that serves the, um, the residential accommodation above and also to extend the property to the rear and to include some dormer windows. Um, the development proposed is considered to be acceptable. There is still parking available to serve the house um, on, on the drive to the front of the property. There has been an objection from the neighbour on the grounds of the, the loss of the parking, but officers are of the view that this is considered to be acceptable. So we're moving... Uh, recommending approval. Councillor Hodges. Thank you, Chairman. Local member, um, can I move it? Um, I see no, no issue with this. There's been lots of those new houses down there, um, amended, altered, and God knows what, and loads more will. I'm glad that the gentleman is settling down into society. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Um, have you got a seconder, though? Oh, Councillor Hartree has seconded. Any other member want to say anything? Otherwise, I'll go straight to a vote. Okay, then. Those in favour of uh, the officer's recommendation, please show. Well, that's unanimous. So, thank you for that. Uh, that's the end of business. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>